Kahala Yahawa by Asham Yahushai Wahabaka Kwadash. I want to give honors to the Akyam and Akwat pushing this wood in truth and sincerity in the four corners of this globe. And also double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and the elders as well. Um, Yasad here from Trinidad East. Short um, video concerning this pagan um, Easter celebration that's coming up. Um, first of all, this quick little thing I just want to read here from Scientific American. And you see, it says here um, Easter was originally celebrated of Ishtar, the Assyrian and Babylonian goddess of fertility and sex. The symbols like the egg and bunny were still um, were and still are f fertility and sex symbols. Or did you actually think eggs and bunnies had anything to do with the resurrection? Right. So after Constantine decided to Christianize the empire, Easter was changed to represent. Well, in this case, they say Jesus here. Yeah? But at its roots, Easter, which is how you pronounce Ishtar, is all about celebrating fertility and sex. And um, this is show you that people have this, this thing with Easter and um, how they, they're worshipping and they have no idea where it came from. You know, and um, these people were so ingenious and in tying in this, um, these gods with certain with just um, things and they combine both the, the those deity and those um, goddess and, and and gods that they have they mean something good and um, that all that all stem from way back and that is nothing new but other people know they just everything that is given to them they just take it they never go and research it and see where it starts from and what it represents. So um this this also look there's another um, Serapis here. You see here the headlines here is a uh, God of fertility and the afterlife that united Greeks and Egyptians. You see up to now they not about Israelites. The Israelites never celebrated these things. These things came from from Babylon straight down. And then just keep going on and on until it reaches now. Right? Um, see, they have a statue of Serapis, yeah, I believe. Bust, bust of Osiris, and they have a statue of Serapis. And these are all graven images, also. Now, um, one of the reasons why it's like that, if you go there to Second Kings, 1729 Howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans have made every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And it says every nation right they made gods of their own. And this this term way back this um and as you see in first 30 here and the men of Babylon made Sukkot Benot, which is Babylon. So you see how far back it starts. So these people just make gods from since way back. And um, they just keep, as kingdoms change and um, power change, they just keep pushing their, um, their gods on the other people or the people that they, they, they took over, the countries that they took over, the nations that they took over, that they have to bow down and worship and do what they excuse me. what they did or else you could kill um, and you'll see that they go down here in verses 2 so they feared the Lord and made unto themselves the lowest of them priests and of high places which sacrificed for them in the houses of high places they feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence so they fed the Mosaic woman that they served their own gods because the God wasn't dealing with them as they were other nations. The God was only dealing with his people, the Israelites. Right? Um, verse 34. And unto this day, they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they have the statute or the ordinances and 
or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he knew Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice them. And he's talking to Jacob here, and he said, You shall not bow, serve, you know, um, and this is what the other people are doing here. A lot of Jakes is into this, this Easter thing too, because, you know, being conquered after different kingdoms, that they, they were forced onto this, this tradition of men. Right, um, verse 36, But the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt with great power and stretched out arm, him shall you fear, and him shall you worship, and him shall you to sacrifice. And the statute and ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, you shall observe to do evermore, and you shall not fear other gods. And this is another example here, the statutes and ordinances and the law and the commandment which was he wrote for you which is Jacob, he didn't write that for everybody, which is why the nations doesn't fall under the law, the commandments, or the statutes, which is why they could go ahead and make the other gods, and they, they could serve other gods, because they can't serve the most high, right? And the government that I, the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods, but the Lord of your God, he shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of your enemies. How be it did they ha did they how be it they did not hearten but they did after their former manner. So these uh, nations feared the Lord and served their given images, both their children and the children's children, and did their fathers, and so do unto this day. And you see him, you did not hearken, you didn't listen to the moon sign, and they did after their former manner, and you continue to follow these these um pagan traditions and worship these given images and uh, these Greek and Roman gods and Babylonian gods. Yes, yes. So, so these nations fear the Lord and they serve their given images. Right? Both their children, their children, children and their fathers so do unto this day and up to this day. They're still doing it, which is why Easter is still being celebrated and amongst Easter the other pagan holidays like Christmas and Valentine's and um, everything else. Now, um, I just want to just punch across something very quickly here. You see here in Daniel <coughs> 7 1, right? And this is concerning the vision. In the first year, Bel 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 Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream, he told the sum of matters. Daniel speak, I saw of in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea and the four beasts came out from the sea diverse one from another right so a lot of people thinking this four beasts is like what they actually describe here first was a lion eagles so they they're looking for these things but when they really look now then they realize what it is that he really was talking about here um, if we go down in verse 17 these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall, shall arise out of the earth. This is the four kings, yeah. which is basically the Babylon, the Persian, the Greek, and the, the Roman, the Roman Empire. And he said, the fourth beast, which is the Roman Empire, shall uh, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And right now we still be, and we still under the Roman um, Empire. It doesn't seem so, you know. People thinking they, that um that, that that has done away. But the system that we live in and the government that we use, all that is, and it, 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 all that is what came from the Roman Empire. <coughs> they took down the monarchy system and had parliament set up. So when you take down the head, someone else can just take the place and continue to rule. Um, and also, they also brought forward to them all the different um, traditions and, and um, deities that they used to pray and worship up until this day, that everybody do it and they don't know why. In Mark 7, um, Pharisees came to the Hawashai. Let 
shine um, this is basically the, the, the sort of type of eating without washing your hands uh, then if I see scribe asking why walk but why walk not die disciples according to the tradition of the elders but eat bread with unwashing hands and you see this tradition of the elders and they also follow different traditions right and he answered unto them well had Isaiah, which is Isaiah, prophesied of you hypocrites, as written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And when you start to follow traditions, that is what will happen. You actually honor the most high with your lips after why not your heart. Right? How be it in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. You see that? This is what they start to teach, the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. As the washing of pots and cups and many other such things like you do. Um, and he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Right? So you see it here again. He, he knew. So he, this is why he came back also to set, set everything straight. Right? Um, and then in Colossians, let's start from. Chapter 2, chat from, chat from 1, chat from 1. For I would, I would that ye know that great conflict I have for you for, um, and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and on, unto all riches and the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and the Father and Hamashiach. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Beguile says charm and enchant, right? Often and deceptive way. So, lest any man charm into enticing words, which is what these, um, these people do when they entice you to these. Uh, these traditions that they have right now, saying that is the way, you know, and their interpretation is totally wrong. It's not not important. It's not biblical. Um, let me see. Um, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in your Hamashiach, as you have therefore received. Hamashiach, Yahushai, the Lord, so you walk in him, rooted and up, rooted and built up in him, established the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding men with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach. So you just have to be careful that, you know, they're not, um, you don't get fooled and rope into these traditions of men that they have. Here. Right? Um, just to finish off here, quickly, 1 Corinthians 1 and 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? 1 Corinthians 2 6. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that, that come to naught. Yeah, you see, see, see that? Wisdom of his world come to naught, is zero, it's nothing. First Corinthians 3 19. For the wisdom of his world is foolishness with God. <clears throat> For it is written, He taketh the wise of the, in their own craftiness. So, when it's time, He's going to take them in their own craftiness. Um, so, with that, I just want to close off and say, Shalom, Paul Yakim, and double honors again to the apostles and elders of great. Shalom.